Async messaging might come in very handy even in very simple scenarios. The problem is that whenever we think about async messaging, we tend to think about Kafka, about RabbitMQ, about Azure Service Bus and other similar services. However, using these services in our very simple scenarios is like buying a supercomputer just to watch Netflix. So is there an easier way? Well, it is, and in this video I will show you everything you need to know to get started with async messaging in your .NET applications in the easiest possible way. Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. When it comes to async messaging, we tend to think that we need to implement Kafka or RabbitMQ or Azure Service Pass or similar services. But let me tell you this, there is a way easier way to bring async messaging to your .NET applications using Azure Storage Queues. And in this video, I will show you exactly how you can get started with Azure Storage Queues in your .NET applications. Here we are in the Azure portal and I have already created the needed resources for this one and they are really similar to all the other videos that we have done on Azure on this channel so far. So if you're not familiar with the setup that we have here, you might want to go and check the other videos in the Azure for Developers playlist. The most important thing here is that we have this storage account and Azure Storage Queues is a part of the storage account. And we have looked into the other videos into containers when it comes to the storage account. So today we will actually go in these queues and we will take a look in how we can use this functionality to our advantage. And the first thing that we need to do obviously is create a queue and I will name this queue product. And here we also have the URL to the queue, but this is not something that we will really need so far. Now, the next thing that we need is to go to the Azure keys and get the connection string because we will need this connection string to connect from our .NET application. Make sure that we can copy it from there. And from the Azure portal, we are pretty much set. I just want to come back here to the queues and I would like to click on this product. And right now this queue is empty, but as we'll go on with the video, we'll see that we will have some information here and we will come back and look at this Azure portal quite a few times. Now let's get back to our application and we have here a very basic API with this products controller. And what we want to achieve is that anytime or every time that we create a new product like this, uh, this here, we also want to send a message to the queue that, hey, a new product has been created. And we have also a console application that we have set up here, and this will be the consumer. So this application's main purpose will be to take a look into the queue and see whenever there is a new message regarding a new created product, it should do something with it, with that message and we'll look into exactly into what we can do once a message has arrived. First of all, let's go and create a new class that we will call queue service. And this will be the service that will be responsible to handle or to communicate with our queue. In our case for this API, the main purpose of the service would be to post or to create messages, to send messages to that specific queue. In our queue service, let's add our connection string to our storage account as a private read-only field. We will also need a queue client. And this queue client is actually part of a package that you need to install. And this is this manage NuGet packages. And if we take a look, we should have this package already here. It is Azure storage queues. So this is the package that you need to be able to interact with queues in the Azure storage account. And once you have the package, obviously we just need to import the using and we would be good to go. Let's also create a constructor. And in the constructor, we will create a new instance of this queue client. And this queue client will just provide a connection string and the name of the queue, which is products. Remember, this is exactly how we named our queue. And now we are ready to create a method that will send or publish our messages to some queues. And what we need to do obviously here is, first of all, we would need to import system.text.json because the thing is that when you write messages to a queue, the, those messages need to be in a string format. And therefore we use the JSON serializer and we then serialize the product that we have to a string. And then the next thing that we do is we use the queue client and we send the message and we provide the string that we want to send to the queue. Next, we need to go to the program.cs and add our queue service to the dependency injection container. And then the next logical step would be to come back to our controller. And here we'll add our queue service as a private read-only field. And we'll also take in as an incoming parameter and we'll assign it to our field. And now that we have everything here, the next obvious thing that we can do 
it is come to our create product and after we create the product and after it is saved to the database so that we also have a valid id we can use the queue client or the queue service to actually post the message and this is as simple as just calling our service send message async and then the message will be returned or will be sent to the queue and then obviously here we have this return created at action because we still want to return this 201 status so we would be good to go and we can already start our application and see exactly how this is supposed to work okay so here we have our swagger and let's then create a new product so let's try it out let's give it here a name that will call this uh, code wrinkles and since this channel supports memberships i would add here ambassador and ambassadors members also have access to the source code that's one of the mo of the main benefits so let's execute this request and we receive this 201 created which is okay so let's go back to our Azure portal and just refresh here and you see that we have this message. So the message was published successfully. We see that it has a D4 name, code wrinkles and description ambassador. So that's actually the message that we have published. We see that here we have an insertion time when the message was inserted in the queue and we have an expiration time. Let's go back to our application. Let's just pause it right now because we don't need it. And let's go to the second step and we want to configure the consumer. Now the consumer would just peek into the queue, take the messages, like dequeue the messages and do something with them. So in order to achieve that, we'll also go here in our console application. We will add a new class that we will call queue service. And here I will reuse the things that we already have in our constructor in the other service in the API. And we just need to import this queue client. Remember, once again, this is part of the Azure storage queues package. So you will need to install that NuGet package in order for things to work. Now, when it comes to reading messages from the queue and doing something with them, Azure Storage Queues gives us a lot of different opportunities or ways to interact with the messages of a queue. And the first way in which we could that or we, we, which we could interact with the message in the queue is to just peek to the message, like not really dequeuing it, but just peek into it and see exactly what the message is all about. So let's implement a method that will allow actually us to do exactly this. So what we need here is well, we have this var message and then we use the queue client and you see that we have this message, this method that's called peak message async. So we receive this and if we take a look at the response type, you see that we have a response and it is a generic one and the response or the generic part or the, the generic type parameter would be an array of picked messages. Now a picked message, obviously if the array is higher than zero, it means that we have a message. If the length is less than zero or is zero actually, then it means that we don't have any message in a queue. So we don't or we can't really process it. But if we have one in the queue, then we have this console right line. Here you could provide whatever logic you want. You can take that message then also well create a product instance from that message and save it in another database save it to a file whatever you may need to do as a consumer of the specific message for simplicity's sake we are just displaying this on the console so what we'll do we'll look into the really first message that we have from the peak and then we want to display the body now if we come back here to this uh, program which is empty right now let's do here a little setup a very simple setup with while true and we'll have here a wait task dot delay. So we just wait one second. And after we wait one second, we want to do something. What we need here is an instance of our queue service. So let's create that new queue service. And that would allow us to use the queue service. And now what we can do is just simply come here and say await queue service dot pick message async. And then we would be able to do that. And we can even run this application right now. And it would be able to pick the message in the queue. So let's start it. And we see that indeed, each second, we just read the message in a queue. And this also tells us that the message still, still remains there. In fact, let's stop the application and move back to the Azure portal. And we, if we refresh this, you will see that the message is still there. So picking the message just allows us the opportunity to take a look at what we have in the queue at a certain point, and then we can decide what exactly what would we want to do. Another very nice and important functionality of uh, this queue client is that it also allows us to actually update messages in the queue. And here we have implemented a method that's update message async, 
And once again, what we want to do here is we use the queue client and then we do the receive message async that kind of like receives us a message. Here we can just have a single message that we will receive, but we can also, we have, there is this method receive messages and we can basically dequeue more than one message at, at a certain time. But the only thing is that what we want to hear, to do here is take a look into what exactly that message is. And if we handle value, like if we have something in a queue and if we got a message, then we want just to update it. And to do this, we use this update message async method. Now, this method is very important because there are some things that we need to provide. Now, first of all, we need to provide the message ID. That's obvious because this here is how the queue client and the queue storage will indicate exactly what message needs to be updated. But then the next very important thing is this pop receipt. That's a very important property because it might be that you have several different consumers at the same time and until you update the message, maybe that message gets dequeued and deleted by another consumer. Obviously, in that case, you won't be able to update that specific message. So what this Azure Queue client does is that based on this pop receipt ID, it will check if that message is still in the queue or if that message was deleted previously. And if the message is still in the queue, then we can provide exactly, okay, uh, what new content do we want to place in the message? This will basically replace the entire body of the message with this words update content. And then we have to provide or we can provide here a time span uh, for six, 60 uh, seconds in this case, in which we want to make the message in the queue unavailable for others. It will simply not be visible. So we make it invisible. And if we go back to our program class and we can just comment out this part and instead we'll have here a wait queue service and we'll use this update message async. So let's run the application now. Okay. And we see that the application run and let's go now to the Azure portal. And first of all, when we refresh it, we see that we will have no results because we have updated the content and we have make, made it invisible for other consumers for 60 seconds. And we see that now the update or the content, the message text was updated to what we have placed it previously. So let's move over to the final operation that you will perform probably more often. And this is dequeuing the message. Now dequeuing the message has some similar two steps with updating the message. So first of all, we need to call on the queue client, this receive message is async. And in this, if this message has a value, so if the value is not null, the only thing that we will do here is we'll print that in the console. But once again, here is where you would, I don't know, write it to a database, do whatever you need to do, like processing with that specific message. The important thing here is that after we do everything in order to dequeue that message, we need on the queue client to call this delete message async. Now, if we go now to the program once again, and we comment out this one, and instead of this one, we will have this await to service dot delete. How did we call that method? Because I just really forgot this. So it's the queue async, not delete. Okay. And if we run the application now, we should see the message in the console because we printed in the console and it's updated content. So if we go back to the Azure portal and we refresh it, we see that we have no results. So that message right now has totally disappeared from our queue and will never come back because it was successfully dequeued. That pretty much covers it up. However, once again, I want to emphasize that using Azure storage queues is really optimal for very simple scenarios in which you just need very simple asynchronous communication. If you need to implement some more complex pattern of asynchronous communication, then obviously you need to think about using services like Kafka, like RabbitMQ or like Azure Service Bus. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and like it so that you make it easier to discover for others. And if you are for the first time on the channel, don't be shy and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever we post new content on this channel. If you have any questions or if you just want to get in touch with me, head over to the comment section and leave your comment and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.